All right, Bar Naturals, Prez, talk to the people, man. Let them know what's getting ready to go down. Yo, what's going on, guys? You here, Imoni Bar Natural, Prez. Sam will bring you shoulder routine. It's gonna be done all on the rings. Again, it's gonna be tailored to build muscle. It's gonna be more high volume. A lot of isometric hold, a lot of time under tension. We're gonna start with an isolation movement, like I always like to do, warm up the shoulder joint. Then we're gonna get into our main movements for the day. It's gonna be about five exercises total. And uh, so the first move we're gonna do, we're gonna do face pulls on the ring. It's gonna really target the rear delt, and it would be a mimic move if you were in the gym of doing a face pull with the cable. And now, it's always good to do a warm up for your shoulders before doing any type of training. But especially when you're doing your shoulders, one of the least things people train is the rear delt. Rear delt's the most undertrained muscle on the shoulders. And it's one that makes your sh whole shoulder pop. And another good thing, about training your rear delt is when you're training your rear delt you're putting your shoulder into external rotation so from here your shoulder is going into external rotation which is behind your body most moves in calisthenics put your shoulder in a lot of internal rotation which is tends to, which tends to cause problems plus a lot of everyday activities just has you in a lot of internal rotation so it puts you in like an overextended period of time where you're internally rotated in daily life so it's always good to do something to open up the shoulders and get the external rotation going. So just for example, push-ups, internal rotation. Planch, uh, dip support hold, internal rotation. Push-ups, internal rotation. You sleep on your shoulder, internal rotation. So your shoulders are always getting overworked internally. It's always good to have that nice balance and build that rear delt. So first move we're gonna do, like I said, is face pulls on the rings. All right, let them know what you got on there, man. What's that you got oh, on so there? So this is just a 12 pound vest. You could do this body weight. I've done this routine body weight normally, but uh, this is my week to go up in weight, so I'm using the 12 pound vest today. It's gonna be the same movements I always do, and the same movements you guys are gonna do with no weight. So follow along. You want it this way or that side? Right, face me, I'll move around. No, all right, bet. You think the other way is better, whatever you think. So face pose, guys. You want your body tight, and you're gonna pull the ring straight to your forehead. Three sets, 10 to 12 reps. So this move is similar to doing an Australian pull-up or a body row for your back, but instead of rowing to your body, you're rowing to your forehead. So again, you're pulling high to your forehead. Same thing you would be doing in the gym if you were gonna be doing a face pull movement with a cable or any type of band or something. Remember, a face pull for external rotation, your shoulders a higher pull. You wanna keep your elbows high. Same thing that you're doing on the rings. Elbows stay high. So we're doing three sets, 10 to 12 reps, one minute break between these. Just to get blood to the muscle, warm it up for the next sets to come. All right, y'all, where we at again, man? Let me know where we at. So we're in Queens, Juniper Park, and Middle Village. So you already know, it's our bar set. We got the ring set up here, the bar set up in the back, mm -hmm. through the cut, if you guys can see or not. Yeah. But uh, it's got everything out here. Okay. This is where I train at, Bar Naturals Park. That's right. Catch me on this side for the next set so I get it on my camera a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Catch me on this. Okay. All right, set two. Same thing, guys. So remember, when you're getting into position, always set up. Feet together. Always engage your glutes. This always got to stay tight. You don't want no sinking in the hips. Everything engaged throughout the whole movement. So even though we're isolating our shoulders here, again, with calisthenics and especially on the rings, even when you're doing isolation movements, your entire body still engaged. You're engaging your core, your glutes, whole body's working. Always gonna build that nice full body tension. Let's kick that. All right, guys, let's go.
and always control the movement. Don't, don't let your body just drop down with gravity. Control it down, control the negative. And remember, you're always, always focus on the muscle that you're working. So like I said, we're working the rear delt right here. We're pulling to our forehead, but in your head, focus. You're initiating that pull from the rear delt. That rear delt is pulling your body up. That's gonna teach you mind-muscle connection. It's gonna stop you from using so much arms and all these pulling move, move, uh, movements. Just focus on the, the muscle that you wanna work and target, and in your head, before you do the rep, all right, in your head, I'm pulling from my delt. And pull from your fucking delt. And you're gonna feel the connection a lot better, trust me. What we drinking, man? What we drinking over there? Got water in this one. You already know, guys. Yeah. Aminos and carbs right here. It's hot out here today. Yes, sir. I'm feeling it. I take my shirt off. <laughs> Shit. Burning up out here, man. Damn, George is trying to flex on me right now. Nah. <laughs> it's hot out here. Shoot. You see right there? Okay. Remember that rear delt. Mm -hmm. You want that? That pop right there. Right. Let's go. Set three. And remember, guys, with the rings, the lower it is, the harder. So if this is too hard for you at this level, raise the rings. Your body will be more hard, more slanted. And just pull. Do the same motion. Pull from your delts. Pull to your forehead. Let's go. Three sets, 10 to 12 reps for the warm up. Then we're gonna move on to our next move of the day, which is gonna be the main move. It's gonna be cross presses. So this is an advanced move, but again, scalable for everybody. So one, if you can't do them the way I'm doing them, you're not gonna do it with the vest on. And as we get into it, I'll show you the progression for everybody. So similar to so a cross press on the rings, you're gonna see I'm gonna be Fully locked down on, a, on the rings in a support hold, and I'm gonna go down, and then I'm gonna press up, straight arms. And what this is gonna mimic, say you're in the gym and you have two, two dumbbells in your hand, and you're gonna do side lateral raises, target the side delt the whole time. Side laterals with a dumbbell, if you're doing cable side raises, it's the same motion. Cross presses, cable, cable side lateral raises, dumbbell side lateral raises, all the same motion targeting the side delt here, but again, now that we're on the rings, our whole back's gonna be engaged, core's gonna be engaged, and besides just hitting the side delt, our whole entire scapula and our real whole shoulder girdle is gonna come into stabilization here, just for the fact that we're on an unstable surface now. So besides just targeting the side delts extremely, the whole shoulder's gonna be working a lot also. For this, I'm gonna have to raise the rings up, because I'm gonna have to be high enough where my feet do not touch the floor, when I come down, so watch. All right, y'all, we're with Bar, Naturals, Prez, Juniper Park in Queens. Giving y'all a nice uh, shoulder routine on the rings. Got the graded rings, they're on a level 12. If I was doing the body weight, I would muscle up into this. But since I got the vest on, I'm gonna just jump up. I don't want to fatigue my shoulders too much. So let's go, set one. So for these, the goal is to get six to 12 reps. It's more of a, it's a strength movement, but we're trying to get it in the higher volume rep range. So six on the low end. If you could do more, go for the high end, 10 to 12 reps. Let's go, set one.
again, guys, I'm gonna just jump into the flow support hold. Now from here, all I'm gonna do, slide my arms out and press up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let me ask you a question, Elvis. What up? Um, the range of motion you was using, should you go wide? Can you go wide so, or explain that? Explain. Yeah. So the far the wider you go, the harder it's gonna be. I got the vest on, so again I have a little more added resistance, so my range is gonna be a little less, but the tension is there and the added load is there. So if you can't go full out, even if you slightly, the farther you bring your hands out from your body, the more your side delt's gonna become engaged. Same thing if you hold the dumbbell. If you had two dumbbells here, the second you move here with the dumbbells, your, la your side delt is already engaged. It's lifting your arms up. So from that support hold, however far out you can go, is however far out you need to go for your first sets. Your progression is your level. So if you can only get out to here, go to here, right back up. Here, right back up. You're gonna feel the tension in your shoulder regardless, and it's a straight arm movement. So the only joint in your body that's moving is your shoulder joint. So the range of motion, and how far and how far wide you can go all depends on your skill level and where you're starting at. So like I said, the wider the harder, the closer the easier. But again, no matter what, it's the farther you go from your body, the more tension on your shoulders. Can you uh, take that vest off, give them one a little wider to demonstrate that? Yes, sir. Demonstrate that, uh, that length. I actually want to see you do it, that's what it is. <laughs> What's this move called again? Cross presses. Cross, right press. cross presses. Okay. And like I said, if you were doing it in the gym, it would mimic a side lateral raise, or a, like I said, a cable a cable raise to the okay. side to the side delt. Alright guys, set two. No vest on. It's gonna go a little wider, y'all. See that hollow body, man. All muscles engaged in that, man. Like Speak said, on that, man. Holding that hollow body. Yeah. Your core's got to be engaged. You're going to be shaking and rocking on the rings. And again, holding here, just the hollow body support hold. If you're tight and your arms are against your body, just holding that hold is going to engage a lot of shoulders. So no matter what, you're strengthening the shoulder girdle. The shoulder's one big joint. It's strengthening just that whole motion and that whole surrounding area of the shoulder just by holding, stabilizing in that hold. And again, the farther you go out, the more tension you're putting just on the side delt itself. Now, what can, burping, guys. what can that move help you with in regular calisthenics? Like, what that's going to help you with for? Now, you, know, you explain the weights. What about with calisthenics? What can that move help you with? Like to translate on the bar? Yeah, to translate on the bar or the floor. Push-ups. Again, push-ups. Any straight arm movement. Uh, planche, for sure, if you're trying to learn a planche. A front lever. Again, those are all front uh, straight arm movements. Front lever is a straight arm pull. Planche is a straight arm push. But at the same time, your scapula and everything is engaged in a planche. Shoulders are working a lot in a planche. So to have strong shoulders on a ring, on the rings, and be able to do ring crosses, same thing. It's going to translate immensely over if you're trying to do planche training on the bar. Okay. And you'll see next. I'm going to do a little bit of planche training on the rings, just so you guys can see. Also, how you can target your shoulders for planche training on the rings. Okay. Set three and putting the vest back on. All right. That's not as easy. That's not easy as I don't know if it, that, that's a difficult move you just did there, man. That's a like tough said, one. Guys, that's tough. I'm gonna go easy right now. Okay. Ready? For a beginner. Or... Ready. I'm gonna go easy. Okay. Set. All right. 
just a few reps, and then I'm going to do my set with the vest. Okay. So jump up, lock out. If this is your, you can only go to here, hold to here for time. Come in. Here, come in. Here, pause for a second, come in. Pause for a second, come in. So again, when you're a okay. beginner and you're learning, and you're working on your range of motion, always try to get a little pause on each rep that you're going out further on. Each rep that you get to lock out on, try to pause for a second, build that time under tension in that range, and re after repetition, after repetition, one second hold, one second hold. You do six sets of 10, you're already at one minute total time under tension. By that time, this range is gonna be easy for you. Next time you get on the range, next session, your range is gonna be here. This range is gonna be cake for you. So that's how you build up on your range of motion. Build strength in the range you're good at. You don't always just gotta rep in the range. Don't always just go back and forth. Work on those isometric pauses. One second, feel that muscle working in that range, and then come back in. That's how you bust through plateaus. Let's go, set three. Eight reps, I'm gonna go wide as I can on these guys. Like I said, 12 pounds in the vest. Last one, hold that. Ah. Damn. Ooh. Ooh. You're gonna drop down, be careful. If you're gonna have to drop down, guys, don't let your arms come down too fast and extend. If you gotta drop down, let go of the rings and drop down straight. You don't want your arms to get shot out mm -hmm. into full extension. Mm -hmm. Be careful with that. Yes. All right, so next, after you hit these sets, we're gonna do tuck planche holes on the rings. I'm gonna lower the rings, I'm gonna keep the vest on, and I'm gonna show you just another straight arm movement. It's gonna target all shoulders, a little bit of bicep, because you're always hitting bicep when you're in a planche motion, a lot of core, and again, there's gonna be a lot of stability. So doing a tuck planche hold on the parallel bars of the floor, get good on the rings it's gonna be cake for you to do it on the floor or something else two minute break between each of these exercises let your body recover and then we go right back into it and don't forget guys I eat low carb all morning until I train the only carbs I have before I work out there's a banana and spinach in my pre-workout shake. And like I said, the reason is because I believe if you keep your carbs to all post-workout and keep majority of your calories beforehand, protein and good fats, it's going to keep you in a fat-burning state throughout the workout and throughout the whole morning. And you break down the muscles throughout the workout, and as soon as you're done training, that's when you replenish and you start eating carbs post-workout because that's when your muscles are going to want to take in the carbs the most. You start eating carbs pre-workout, they may supply you for energy during this workout, but your body got plenty of energy stored already. You want to supply your muscles after. You want that, the carbs to be utilized in muscle building. You don't want to just use it for, for muscle breakdown. So you supply the muscles post-workout with the carbohydrates and the protein. And pre-workout, you keep your protein and healthy fats, keep your body in a fat-burning state, and help you stay lean all year long. So not as much protein after the workout. Everybody's always protein, protein after the Protein, no. I said protein and carbs post-workout. Oh. You're going to be surprising to say this. The most important thing post-workout is carbs. The carbs are what's going to get shuttled to your body. You get shuttled to your muscles. Yo, we're going to say that for another video when we talk about yeah, that. We'll, we'll talk we'll about, talk about that in another video. Protein, <laughs> the one you want to eliminate yeah. post-workout is fats. We'll fats you want to keep low post-workout. We're going to talk Remember about that, that another right. time. So I'm going to lower the rings now. Okay. Just so, again, this is just a tuck planche hold. So I'm just going to be able to put them in a position so I can just get up easily and lift my, and lift my uh, legs up and hold it easy.
And we're going to do another interview too sometime. Strike one. Strike three. Oh, three. Oh, okay. For the day. Oh, for the day, yeah. Hi, y'all. So, tough playing show. I'm going to keep the vest on for the first set. If I have to take it off of my hold in, I want to get at least a 10 second hold each set. We're going for. We're gonna to try to accumulate a total of 30 seconds of holding today. So that's where your guys' goal should be to start. If you're doing this body weight, you're gonna go one set of max time. And you're gonna add up your sets until you can hit a total of 30 seconds. If you can hit 30 seconds easily, you're ready to move on to the next progression, which will be an advanced tuck or add some weight on and, and get stronger in the tuck still. So again, we're gonna do, I'm gonna aim for three sets, 10 second hold. So again, straight arm movement, another one. Really gonna talk at the front delt. A lot of stabilization in the shoulder. And this is just a, this is just a tuck planch. Same thing you would see on the floor, on the parallel bars. We're taking it to the rings. It's gonna add another element of instability. So here we go, guys. It's only eight seconds. So I owe myself 22 seconds. However many sets it takes for me to get 22 seconds left. I'm gonna keep going until I hit that 30 second time. Under, that's what you want, you want to accumulate time under tension. Time under tension is what builds strength and like I said again, it busts through plateaus. So again, straight arm, there's a straight arm movement and here on the rings, when you're doing the tuck planche, your hands are gonna be flared out, elbows pointed forward. So again, same thing if you were doing the planche on the floor, your elbows are always pointed forward and locked out. If you have your hands, if you're doing the planche with your hands forward, sideways or backwards however you do it on the floor of the bars it's always short you're always extending at the elbow your elbows are always pointing forward and it's the same thing on the rings and now it depends on your level if you have to tuck more you tuck more if you could open up your hips more open up your hips more if you can hold the straddle hold the straddle all right let's go eight seconds down All right, I'm gonna keep going. I was unstable there. It's another eight, 16. Come closer when I'm holding. Okay. Shoulder straight on. When I'm in the, when I'm I'll zoom holding. in, I'll zoom in. See if I get a zoom. Matter of fact, I'll come in. Let's go. Five. Nine more seconds, I owe. I'm gonna do five and four. As you can see, this vest is it's only 12 pounds, but it's on my back. So again, it's weighing my hip. Even though I got to keep my hips engaged a little bit for this core, for this movement, it's it's forcing it. it just forced me to press up harder and engage even harder. So if my tuck ain't all there, it's because I have on the air to resistance. But I'd rather have the air to resistance on right now because I want more tension on my shoulders. So the, the key thing is here, guys, is the locked arm and the lean forward and just keeping your hip, hips up. You tuck it your own progression. Let's go, nine seconds. That was six, three more. What that move is actually doing, what's that gonna help with? Planche. Planche oh, okay. is I'm sorry. any straight arm movement in general. 
handstands, of course, because you're training the shoulders. But mainly, this is going to be a great move to train the planche and just work on that that real that shoulder uh, constant tension in the shoulder, constant extension in the, in the elbow. And again, it's going to train hit your biceps because planches ain't in the biceps. It's fully locked out here. You're going to work a lot of core, and it's overall it's going to just strengthen your shoulders for pressing movements, straight arm movements in general, levers because your scapula is going to be engaged a lot here too, guys. So again, straight arm movements in general, just like I said in the previous video. Look at a planche on the floor. You're in a push-up position. I can't do it right now, guys, I'm just letting you know. But if I was in a planche, I would be like this with both feet up. If I'm in a front lever, I'm going to be holding a bar horizontal. Flip them upside down, it's the same image, just flipped upside down. So it's the same muscle groups working, just in opposite forces. Let's go. Last three seconds. I'm going to hold for five for you, though. Ready? Uh, now, this is what you just did. This is um, it's not a beginner move, right? That's like if you're a beginner. Yeah. Just come like this and work on holding like that. Just lean as much far, stay as tucked as you can, straight arms, and start leaning forward. Okay. That's all you got to do. And with the advanced where you was doing it, you was going back more. You're just trying to tilt your hips up hard, okay. higher and try to open up as far as you can. And again, it's, the main thing is the lockout and the, and the uh, tension on the shoulder joint. Okay. Serious shoulder workout today, y'all, uh, for real. Yeah, you were ready. <laughs> like I said, all my training is for a purpose, so I train to be able to perform, and I also train for aesthetics. I train to build muscle. I'm always trying to pro progress in each of my workouts, so I tailor it bodybuilding style when I'm training a certain muscle group, and I do small. I do isolations first, and I go into compounds, and I try to target the whole muscle group, and I try to keep the volume high, and again, I alter it also. I mix up my strength sets, strength sets with some hypertrophy training to get the best of both worlds, and in the end, it's still high volume no matter what, and no matter what, you're still getting a lot of time on the tension. So again, a lot of strength training aspect to it, plus a lot of hypertrophy, so best of both worlds. and. Uh, so like I said, train smart. You don't always gotta train harder. Train smarter than harder, guys. You don't wanna get injured. Know what you're doing. Have a purpose to your training. When I'm training for a five minute drill, you know the 150, my reps are gonna be faster. I'm not gonna focus so much on form because when you're racing against the clock, remember guys, you're racing against the clock. That's you against a time limit. So you're trying to do the best you can. So your form's always gonna be a little broken down. Just keep that in mind. But when you're training for a purpose and you're training to build muscle, Always try to execute per perfect form in every set and every uh, and every movement. Right. You got another exercise after yeah, this, or we two. on this? Okay. Let them know what you got, got next coming up. You adjusting the rings. Hi, right, yo. Next, we're going to go into just a bent arm handstand hold on the rings. Now, this is definitely an advanced movement. If you can't do a handstand on the floor, don't even try this on the rings. Just take this next exercise and take it to the floor. You don't need to use the rings for this. You're just trying to build shoulder strength here, guys. It's just more for shoulder strength and more time on the tension, getting yourself comfortable in a position. So a handstand is, learning a handstand is not so much a strength thing. All it is is, no matter how you learn, it's, it's a skill. A, sh a handstand is a skill. Anybody could do a handstand. You don't gotta be strong. You don't have to have muscle to do a handstand. It's your body understanding how to hold itself in an in a, in a area of space, upside down, which it's not used to doing. Remember guys, we stand on our feet. Body's not used to stand on our hands. It's just training your body to stand in it in an area of space upside down. It's a skill, it's an acquirement that you, that you train over time. It's a central nervous system adjustment. So if you can't do them on the floor, you have no business even trying this on the rings, you'll hurt yourself. And uh, you do the same thing I'm doing and take your set to the floor, that's it. So I'm gonna demonstrate 
I'm gonna do three sets. I'll do the first two. I'll do one on the rings. I'll do one on the floor as a more advanced version on the floor, and then I'll do a beginner version. The third set will be, if you're an absolute beginner, how you can do this on the floor. So set one, and guys, I'm taking the vest off for this because I ain't gonna get a hole on with the vest on for this. That level is just a bonus. So again, all I'm doing is a bent arm hold on the rings. I'm just training my shoulders to get strong in that movement. So I have to, over time, I'm gonna start pressing up little by little until I can get a full press up on the rings. So that's set one. If you got a hand set on the floor and you're comfortable with that, try that on the rings. It's gonna bring a whole nother challenge. It's gonna bring a whole aspect of stabilization. Your core is gonna be involved a lot more. And you'll feel a nice, nice, a lot of tension on the shoulders, a lot. And it's also going to target a lot of the upper chest because, remember, I was deep down there, guys. I was almost in a really deep, totally extended handstand press right there. I just didn't get pushed up. I was all the way down in the fucking lowest point of the movement. So your whole upper chest is engaged as well as your entire shoulders. I'm going to do another set like that because I was feeling good on there. And then I'll do the next, the last two, so I'll do four sets of this. And I'll do the last two as the beginner variations on the floor. I got my own channel too. Subscribe at Bar Naturals. B A R N A T U R A L S. One word. I G Bar Natural Prez. You are ready. My man, that's good money. Appreciate all the love and yeah, yeah. the platform. Links will be in the description box, man. Subscribe to my man. All right, let's go. Set two. I'm gonna try to get a little press up on this, guys. Watch. You're gonna see. I'm gonna go deep, and I'm gonna try to press up as far as I can go. Look guys, always, you see how I start in the false grip? If you're using the rings, get used to always starting in the false grip, no matter what you're doing, because that's just gonna build muscle memory to set up on the rings all the time. See that shoulder, man. All shoulders. Oh. Yeah. Right there, yeah. I see that. The shoulder muscles. Okay. I see that. All right. Remember, guys, shoulders build that, that strong foundation, that width. You want your shoulders to be nice and defined, that full 3D look. The only way you're going to get that is training all, all parts of the shoulder, the front, side, and the rear. It's gonna real build that well, that broadness in your body, and it's gonna help with that taper look that everybody wants. All right, so the next two sets I'm gonna do on the floor. So the first one I'm gonna do, if you have a handstand already, all I recommend doing on the floor right now, and just hold it for time. So you want to try to accumulate again, one minute in total time. So however many sets it takes you to get that one minute. So you hold five seconds, do that. Um, 11 times, 12 times, and that would hit you one minute if you could only hold five seconds. If you could hold 10 seconds, do six sets of 10 second holds. So I'm gonna just demonstrate this. I'm gonna put the vest on for this one, and I'm gonna try to get a 15, 20 second hold with the vest.
22, 23 seconds. So I would do that over and over. That was like 22, 23 seconds. Now I would keep repeating that set until I hit a total of 60 seconds. That would be the next variation if you're not ready to go on the rings yet. If you can't hold the freestanding handstand, I'll show the next progression, the next variation, which would be a regression for a beginner to try next, to try this at your level. So all you would do is you're gonna find the pole I'll take you to the fence for this. Easiest way to start. All you want to do, find yourself a wall, a fence, a pole, and then what we're going to do is kick up and do a handstand. And the same thing applies here, guys. We just want to work on time under tension. Getting used to keeping your, your arms fully locked down and your body upside down. Now, I always recommend if you're training a handstand, First learning it, start back to the wall. It's gonna help with balance. It's gonna fuck up your form, it's gonna teach you, it's gonna make you arch your back more. But it's gonna build the most uh, understanding for you to learn how to keep balance in your hands. Balance on your hands and your fingertips. So always start back to the wall, and then when you get good there, you can start going stomach to the wall. So a beginner variation, right away. Find a wall, a fence, hands slightly outside shoulder width, and all we're gonna do is kick up, right like this, easy. And then lock out and head straight through. And we're going to look behind us. So you want to be able to see what's going on. You don't want your head looking at the floor. You want your head looking through your body. And now all we're doing here is pointing our toes, as pointing our toes and pressing the floor down. So, so beginner, when you're in that handstand position, you want to imagine you're stretching your body out as far as you can. You're pushing the floor down with your hands, and at the same time, you're pointing your toes to the sky. That's gonna really try to elongate your body. It's gonna make you feel engaged. Everything's gonna feel engaged that way. Because if you're not tight and engaged, you're gonna lose that, you're gonna lose that form, you're gonna fall over. So push down on the floor, keeping the arms locked, and at the same time, push your feet to the sky. So almost as if like you're, you're tearing your body apart. So that's the four variations of this movement. So again, if you're advanced, then you can do handstands. Go for holds on the rings. If you, if you just got a freestanding handstand and just getting good at it, work on the floor, freestanding, accumulating 60 seconds total time. If you, just, if you can't even do a freestanding handstand yet, find yourself a wall and just practice the kickups and hold in the same way. Freestanding against the wall for time. Try to get comfortable until you can accumulate one minute at a time. So as four exercises down, we did the face pulls, we did the cross presses, we did tuck planch, we did tuck planch holds, we did handstand holds on the rings, and the last movement of the day is gonna be a planch push-up. Anybody could do this. And again, this is a movement that could be done on the floor. It's, a, it's a, not too it's not too much of an advanced movement, but it is an advanced movement in the sense that it's gonna lead you up into an advanced movement in general because it's gonna help you train for those muscles that you need for the planch. But again, this could be done by anybody. So I'm below the rings. And I'm gonna show you how, how this uh, exercise Oh, uh, okay, goes. that's what I was guessing, man. I thought you was gonna do it all the way up there. You're gonna lower no, the rings. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm like, what the... <laughs> Planch push-ups can't be done that high. Unless you can do a full planch. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, so. We're dropping them. If you got the braided rings, we're gonna drop it down to a three and a half height. And now, for demonstration purposes for the first set, I'm gonna take the vest off because I want you guys to see the full muscle engagement of the shoulders and the scapula. This is a lot of, remember, planche, guys, you guys gotta understand this one movement. Anybody can do this, a beginner mobility drill that you guys should all learn. Protraction of the scapula, retraction. 
protraction. You're pulling your arms all the way forward. The back is rounding. The scapula is being pushed forward. That's internal rotation on the, shoulder, on the shoulders. Protraction, planche position. Retraction, shoulder blades go back. Sca uh, external rotation in the shoulders. And that's going to help you with that front lever hold, that retracted position in the scapula. So again, like I said, planche and front levers, they're opposite. They're the same move, same image, it's the same movement, but it's opposing muscle groups. So in the planche, you're in protraction. In the front lever, you're in retraction. Now look at the arms. The arms stay straight the whole time to work through this movement. And now this is a drill all you guys should practice standing up, and then you take it to the floor and practice it on the floor in a push-up position to get stronger. So protraction, extend your arms as far forward as you can, suck in your stomach, squeeze your glutes. So always tuck in your stomach, squeeze your glutes, reach as far as you can, and then bring your shoulder blades back. That's one rep. Forward, back, forward, back. Protraction, retraction. All right? So for the first set, you're going to come and you're going to watch the form of my scapula and how I go down. And I'm only going to be bending at the elbow. Alright, y'all ready? So, starting position, hollow body, like this. You want your butt tucked down, you don't want your butt up, you want your butt down, but you don't want it sunk in. So, when I say down, it's just in line with your body, you're squeezing your glutes, you're not letting it stick up. So now, watch, come to the side, look at my scapula. My scapula is rounded, my butt is engaged, my glutes are engaged. My scapula is fully rounded. I'm gonna go down, keeping that scapula as round as I can, and when I come up, I keep it round. I lock out like that. Six. Go down. Six. Up. Six. Now again, it's more of a strength move here, guys. So we're going, the reps are gonna stay around four to six reps, doing it on the floor, be you can get higher reps, because again, the ring's gonna bring an element of instability, you're gonna put a lot more tension on the shoulders. So, same thing, the key thing is, going down, just bending at the elbow, trying to hold that protracted position as much as you can on the way down, and then when you lock out, you lock back down into protracting. So I'm gonna show one more set on the rings, and I'll do the next set on the floor, the third set on the floor. So it's not easy on the rings. If you're having trouble on the rings, holding that position, we're gonna take it to the floor. So I'm gonna demonstrate on the floor, guys. Same thing. We're gonna come down, palms forward. I mean, fingertips facing forward here. If you have to, slightly slant your wrist out, but you don't want to go backwards here. So wrist, uh, fingers primarily forward. You're gonna come down like this, butt down, and you're gonna shift your weight forward now. So now. If you were in a push-up position, stay in the push-up position, your shoulders stay stacked above your hands. Now in a planche, watch the lean forward, your shoulders are going to be in front of your hands. So catch it from the side. Staying in that protracted position, so here, coming, butt comes down, you're leaning forward, keeping that protraction in the, in the scapula, and what we're going to do now, you just lean, your, bend your elbows forward, head towards the ground, Press back up. One, two, three, four, five. As you see, slightly easier on the floor. But again, you don't got that element of instability. So I'll do one more set. But the goal here for this exercise, last exercise of the day, just three sets, 
max rep. So if you're doing them on the rings, the sets, the volume will be a little lower, around four to six reps. You go to the floor, a little higher, like six to ten reps. And again, you don't got to do so much, uh, wor you don't got to worry about so much stability and uh, instability in your shoulders. Last set here, guys. One more. One minute break. Yeah, yo, I answer in George's comment section. So, and you guys got questions about the routine, leave a comment. I'm gonna respond. I'll get back to you. You can always hit me up on my page or DM me. I'll respond. I got you guys. So, I ain't like that. I try to help everybody I can. All right, last set. So remember, it's a lot to think about. You even can see I'll fuck up mid set sometimes, and you gotta correct yourself. But you gotta stay down. Retra protraction of the scapula for each set. So you gotta think about keeping your glutes engaged. You gotta think about pushing out and retracting that scapula. So again, it's full body tension. It's why the planches and the front levers are the hardest moves because you gotta have so many muscles engaged just to do these moves. So let's go, last set. Watch the setup. Again, hands forward, feet together. My butt's up right now, right? So I'm gonna start in almost a pipe. I'm gonna lean forward, slide my feet forward, drop my butt, push down so my scapula is as round as I can get it, and from here, just drop the elbows, head to the floor. All right, Elvis, talk to the people, man. Let them know what just went down. So, I just blasted shoulders. Full shoulder routine on the rings with progressions. Can be done by any level. Beginner, more advanced. I gave you guys the easiest variations of each movement along with the hardest variations. So again, like I said, shoulders are the foundation of your physique. You want a nice shoulder definition and nice roundness in that shoulders to build that broadness, that 3D look and to help with the taper. And so again, this is a high volume. Like I said, a lot of time under tension. Even though it's strength training, there's some sets where it's low reps and there's a lot of holds. That time under tension builds volume. That's, that's still being volume being built. So your muscles are under tension for a lot of time. A lot of blood rushing to the muscles. So again, like my routines are tailored to perform. I do it to train moves and calisthenics and to be functional. And at the same time, they're geared to build muscle and build that aesthetic look. So again, like I always say, train smarter, not harder. Always train hard, but don't train, don't train hard and not smart. You don't want to injure yourself. You always got to train with a purpose. So don't forget, subscribe That's Good Money channel. Then come to me, subscribe Bar Naturals, and there's more to come. So stay tuned, guys. All right, thanks a lot, Bar Naturals Press. Links to his uh, Instagram and YouTube will be in the description box. That's right. So subscribe and follow him. Thanks a lot, man.